Um, my name is Mark Held and I'm the European Outdoor Group's General Secretary. Um, I've been asked at rather short notice to talk about uh, quantifying participation in outdoor sports. And I say rather short notice because whilst I work with this on a daily basis, it's sometimes hard to put it into just a few words. Um, when we started looking at the whole nature of sports in terms of government and how we organise sport, how we get investment into outdoor sports, it became rather clear that there is a great lack of understanding about how you define outdoor sports, what is part of an outdoor sport and what is not part of an outdoor sport. And I think part of the problem with this is that um, there is no set structure for outdoor sports. It's, it's rather uh, fragmented and rather ad hoc as opposed to being organised like football with uh, federations and football stadiums and all these other things that go along with that. Outdoor is by its very nature much more um, personal and much more individual. So we then come down to the issue of saying well how many people take part in outdoor sports? Um, it's rather difficult to say because we don't have any real statistics. We know how many people are part of organisations like the DAV in Germany, it's the Deutsche Alpine Verein, or how many people are part of the Ramblers Association in the UK. But as a percentage of the overall population, we're not entirely certain how that actually stacks up as a total figure. We then on the other side have governmental figures, and, and, and I live in the UK, and for example I know that every governmental study, walking comes out as one of the most important activities in the whole of society. But within walking, what do they include? They include dog walking, they include every kind of walking. So, so again, it's rather difficult to actually define how many people would take part in that. And then if I move on from there and I say, start talking about what is an outdoor sport, um, from my side, which is much more the industry side of things, we have tended to define outdoor sports, in, uh, it, particularly in our imagery, as rather extreme. We have focused heavily on images of top climbers and uh, top athletes doing out outdoor sports at rather an extreme level. Uh, and now we're getting this growing realisation that actually, far from being uh, attractive to a lot of people, that is actually rather a put-off. They don't like the idea of that, it's a bit scary. Uh, and I come back to the full circle to saying uh, an outdoor activity is for us, it's a, it's a combination of a human activity in a natural or semi-natural environment. So for example, I see absolutely no distinction at all between somebody doing a, a grade five ice climb to somebody who's say 80 years old and going for a, a two kilometer walk in an Alpine Valley. They both involve a physical activity, they both involve the natural, uh, the natural um, environment and you cannot say one is better than the other. So outdoor is very encompassing um, and it's very, um, it's very accessible to people. Um, they're not necessarily having to join anything to be part of it, they're not necessarily having to be, you know, to be qualified to be part of it. So it's, it really is a, a, a kind of hidden giant within society um, and, and I think it's, um, it's fair to say that uh, we have probably way, way, way underestimated the actual level of, uh, of, of outdoor activity in our general populations um, and I might even add to that that we've probably way underestimated the level of activity in urban areas uh, and we know, for example, that urban outdoor activities, whether they be bouldering, be parkour, or be uh, park gyms, anything else like that, they have really increased over the last few years. So, how do we quantify outdoor activities? <laughs> very, very tricky one. Um, and I'm sure that there will be lots more work to actually look at very carefully at the definitions of, of, of outdoor sport, what we include, what we don't include. Um, and how we then go about assessing their, their usefulness to society as a whole.